What next for the Sussexes after that grifter slur? Can Prince William really solve homelessness? And is the King cross about William's intervention? Find all that and more on Palace Confidential. Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential. I'm Jo Elvin and it's been another busy week for those royals. And here to discuss all the week's stories are the Daily Mail's royal editor, Rebecca English, and the paper's diary editor, Richard Eden. Welcome to you both. Now, a reminder that if you haven't already, do make sure you subscribe to our channel and never miss another episode. Rebecca, let's start this week with a look at an interesting interview given by the Prince of Wales, which suggested he is very ambitious about a particular plan. Yes, he is. I mean, homelessness has always been a really big issue for William. He started going to homeless shelters like The Passage with his late mother when he was kind of 11 years old. And it's something he's always worked quite passionately on in front of behind the scenes. Now, I've got to be slightly careful what I say because there's going to be a big launch on this next week. But uh, ahead of that, he gave an interview to the Sunday Times in which he said he's going to make this as a, a really big part of his life's work moving forwards. And even said, you know, I want to, to end uh, the whole issue of homelessness. He thinks this is a very preventable problem in this day and age. And this is something we shouldn't be just working to deal with the results of. We mm. should be actively working to stop even happening in the first place. So are you saying that whatever the plans are that are being announced next week, you already know what they are? Yes. <laughs> She's such a gatekeeping <laughs> tease. Can you tell us anything? Well, I can't, but there'll be a lot of engagements involved next week about it. As I say, it's something he has long been passionate about. Um, and I think he's He's basically really stepping up his game on this, I have to say. So, Richard, it does seem like he's venturing into more political territory with these comments. Is that, is, is that what you found? Well, I think with the environment, which is one of his other big causes, yes, it is less politically sensitive. But homelessness is also quite party political as well, because <clears throat> the opposition here, the Labour Party, um, will often criticise the government for um, a, you know, a rise in homelessness, and they'll use that as an example of the government not doing well. Um, and also, because remember that homelessness, it's not just about, um, you know, people sleeping on the street. It's about people who, um, you know, lack somewhere to live permanently. Yes. So they might be in temporary accommodation or whatever. And there's been, you know, there's been an increase in that. And it ties in with lots of other difficult issues like immigration. It's, it's a very complicated political subject. So, yes, um, it, it's a difficult one for him to get into, but it is very important. This is one of the things that makes me smile, that people you know, often criticise us. They say, well, there's a cosy relationship with the royal family. You don't ask them the hard questions. But uh, certainly when I was speaking to his team this week, I said to them, how, you know, it, it's a very laudable aim, and I understand that he thinks this is you know, an entirely preventable anachronism in this day and age. But how are you going to make him seem credible? You know, a man who at the age of 40, 41 has three houses in which he can choose to live any week that he wants. You know, he's going to inherit palaces, none of which is his fault and shouldn't stop him doing good works. But how are you going to make him come across as credible mm. with this? And, you know, they bounced back and said, um, well, we think that he's kind of already put his money where his mouth is in terms of the work he's been doing this over the years. And this is where he can use his convening power to bring people together around the table to try and, you know, to, to mm. stop this issue. <clears throat> Perhaps William sort of feels the nerve touching of that because he did make an interesting uh, comment in that chat, didn't he, about the royal's relevance when he said, we're all very busy and I think it's hard sometimes to see what the family bring and what we do. But he goes on to point out that they try to spotlight things like charities. What do you think about that? Well, I think that absolutely ties into this. And, and this is something that is going to be an even bigger issue moving forwards. You know, life is very different from when his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, came to the throne, where there was a more acceptance of uh, the social strata. You know, things are very different now. So they constantly do have to find ways to make themselves relevant. Now, I think with William, it's very important to stress this comes from a very good place. This is not him trying to seize on an issue. 
and uh, use it for his own purposes. It's something he's, you know, he's, he's been involved in since 11 years old and he's very passionate about. But, it, you know, that public image thing is, is it always an ongoing problem for them. I really can't wait to hear more about these plans. It's so interesting. But, Richard, the interview generated a lot of headlines, but as you revealed, not possibly the intended ones. Not everyone was happy. Well, it just um, boils down to the timing of it because, you know, last weekend we had Trooping the Colour. It was the King's first birthday parade. It was, it was a big, big occasion for King Charles and Camilla. And then that was pushed off the front pages by this interview, which had been given before and was timed to come out on the Sunday, the day after Trooping the Colour. Um, and, you know, that seemed to have been, well, it's very strange, really, the timing, but that caused a lot of, um, you know, raised eyebrows, we could say, among um, the King's um, supporters. Yes, because arguably that could have still been newsworthy if it came out this weekend and, and very separate from the Trooping the Colour. Yeah, and so, I'm not just talking about as a royal correspondent, as someone who's been a journalist for, you know, 20, 30 years. I, I did find it a little odd from a news management perspective because that interview could have come out any day this week. And if you'd wanted to do it, particularly with a Sunday paper, because you feel that they can maybe devote more space to the issues, the complex issues involved, then they could have done it this Sunday. So I didn't, I didn't quite understand that. I have we have say. discussed on this program before, haven't we, the so-called grid, the, the press teams used to stop that sort of clash within the palace. So what, what do you think went wrong here? Do you think it's just lack of communication between the two camps? Uh, well, I mean, the grid, the grid has, as you rightly say, we've discussed it on here, has existed for years, and it is meant to be kind of, it's almost like a chessboard. You can see where all those different chess pieces are meant to be on one day, and just ensure that, you know, people are able to shine a spotlight on the issue that they really want to focus on that day. And I. I what went wrong? I'm not sure, but I do think maybe they don't think anything went wrong, and everyone's very happy about it. You know, I don't know, but uh, yes, I'm sure. I, yes. I doubt it. <laughs> um, but what I do think is it does show that they do need to have more, you know, grown-up, sensible, uh, lateral thinking amongst them to work out. You know, they've got, they've had a lot of trials and tribulations over the last few years, Harry and Meghan on all those issues. There's, you know, I think they're in a very good place now, but there's big bear pits along the way in terms of, you know, relevance and value for money. And I think this is where they do really as a family need to pull together and all to be singing from the same hymn sheet. What do you think the King can do, Richard? Do you think he will be looking at how those sorts of situations can be avoided in the future. Well, remember that this was tried by his mother, who tried to bring the two households, and in that case it was Charles's and hers, together um, to avoid these sort of problems. But it didn't last very long, because I think you do tend to have sort of rival camps and, and rival officials. I have to say the other aspect of it that did um, concern people was the lack of credit in this interview for his father, because Prince William made it sound in the Sunday Times interview as if, you know, it's completely his new initiative. Remember, he's in charge of the Duchy of Cornwall now, which is a huge area of land covering, you know, many acres of um, Devon and Cornwall and other places. And he, he was talking about some venture about building more social housing. Well, um, Prince Charles, King Charles, has been doing that for years. You know, he's really increased the amount of social housing in these areas, and it's something he feels very strongly about. But he didn't get a single mention, whereas William was keen to pay credit to his mother for um, the efforts she did to introduce him to the problem of homelessness. So there were there were a few sensitivities around well, this I mean, issue. Charles built his own town, Poundbury, uh, which is full of affordable housing, and that yeah. was one of the big passions about it. Not only did it evoke his environmental principles, but also it was somewhere that people who couldn't afford to get on the housing ladder in the area could, and, could and do that's so. not the only one. Yeah. There's other developments, oh. like there's one in Cornwall. Yeah. There are others of, of this kind. So, well, it's so get back to us, William, when you built your own town. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's worth saying, you know, this is coming from a really laudable place with William, mm. but I think, as we've discussed, that there are... It's not without its risks, you know, it's not without its its pitfalls. I mean, certainly one of the questions a, a colleague asked of them this week is, have you got house builders on 
footballed you know mm. how you know there are many people in this sphere who've been trying to solve this problem of homelessness for many decades what do you think you can bring that's new to the table that will solve this problem money mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just well, a thought but this is where the convening power of the royal family works and you've seen that with the king over the years with the environment you know he's really afforded some significant change there in bringing the right people together and hopefully willing can do the same with this well, let's move on, Rebecca, to uh, the trooping the colour. Now, how was it for you, and how do you think it compared to other troopings? I thought it was rather lovely seeing Charles and, and Anne, and obviously Edward, as you yeah. Alan said last week, out there together as a family. I thought, you know, the, you know, the Wales's children were adorable as usual, little Louis up there on the balcony. Um, uh, you know, and I think they're really important parts of the royal calendar. You know, there is the very serious work, but they do day in, day out. But we like to see our royal family involved with a bit of pomp and ceremony because it does make them stand out. But Richard, I know that you were a little bit disappointed, weren't you, with the balcony shot? Oh, well, this is just um, is a tricky one because that's, I guess, as a social diarist as well, I've always loved the balcony because it's brought together, you know, all the sort of minor members of the royal family. They've all squeezed onto that balcony for years and it, it gives them, it sort of elevates their social status as well. But, it, but it, it's just like a really jolly family occasion and you see all the lovely different coloured dresses of the, the young royals. It, it's, it was always very good, but this time you've got this huge balcony and it's quite sparsely kind of filled now because it was just the working members of, of the firm and that was a decision that um, Queen Elizabeth made because of Prince Harry and Meghan and also Andrew yeah. that um, um, she didn't want them to appear in case they kind of got, you know, booed by um, the crowds or it caused a bit of a, you know, public relations problem. So she just said, right, we'll just stick to just the working members. And then so King Charles seems to be following that pattern. but. Personally, I think it's a shame, and he should invite them all back. We oh, want everyone again. We're never happy, are we? Because then there's, you know, then you have the critics who don't want everybody on the payroll. They don't. Do you know what I mean? They want Charles to slim down the monarchy. Oh yeah, but forget the critics. You know, <laughs> they, 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 everyone Unless knows Richard, that yeah. they're, yeah, they're not on the yeah. payroll. You know, these yeah. are people who are there. They're just members of the family, and just like any kind of family wedding or occasion, it's nice to invite, you know, everyone. So uh, <laughs> the, the only problem is, yeah, Harry and Meghan or Andrew. But you can say to them, look, sorry, we just don't want you there. I think that's all right. And now, Rebecca, the other big event of the week was the Order of the Garter, where you, cheeky royal minx, got a cheeky little wave. I did. It was, it, again, one of those hardy They're annuals of the royal... Showing the viewers right now, but tell oh, us what was going on. So it was one of those hardy annuals of the royal calendar, the Order of the Garter, which is the nation's most ancient order of chivalry. It's appointed by the sovereign outside of government, but you do have a lot of ex-prime ministers and things like that, people who've given a huge contribution to natural, uh, national life. And every year they have a, a lovely lunch at Windsor Castle, and then they process down through uh, the castle grounds, down to the lower ward where the... Um, All wearing a big feather. They do, where they're, yeah, the yeah. St George's Chapel and they have you know great big ostrich plumes I mean I, look some people will see this as very archaic but I think it's one of those you know traditions that makes Britain and the royal family what they are um, and you know members of the public come in and cheer and as they it was obviously the king's first as sovereign and it was one of those weird moments that as they walk down and process obviously my job is to watch them but we had this weird moment where we just caught each other's eyes at the same time and he kind of gave me like this kind of like ooh, like funny little smile I saw him kind of nudge the Queen and she's like hello um, you know I think they quite like seeing a friendly face amongst the crowds not for the first time I am moved to say there are three people in that marriage don't you think Richard <laughs> you are such a wind up Russian you really are I don't know if I am I think I'm just calling him as I see him <laughs> but anyway well look um, Richard William didn't look that comfortable though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think the Order of the Garter um, ceremony is one of those occasions where Prince William does look most awkward. I think <laughs> that there was one... Well, he's wearing a big ostrich <laughs> feather. That, You'd that, look awkward. Yeah, there's one memorable occasion where I think it was the first time he was there with Catherine, perhaps, and, and she was just um, laughing at him 
hysterically because I think it's fair to say that in his spare time he doesn't wear massively heavy velvet robes. Oh, you do. Breeches and shiny <laughs> shoes. That is disappointing. Yeah. Um, so I suspect it's one of those things he's probably muttered privately about, oh, I'll get rid of this when I'm king. Do you think he will? Uh, no, I hope, I hope not. And I hope that over time he comes to see that it's one of these things that, okay, yes, it looks a bit strange. It's like, you know, when we saw all the, the various um, announcements after when um, Charles was proclaimed king, we saw the people in their um, finery. And it, it's, it's part of the, the pageantry uh, and the, the fun, really, of the royal family. So stick with it, William. I know, <laughs> I know it's very hot and slightly awkward, but Listen, it's, William, it's we entertaining. Need, we need things to look at, all right? And it's been going on for 700 years, so, you know, yeah. I think it's one of those, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> There you go. English has spoken. Well, we've got the Harry and Meghan Spotify row, Royal Ascot and lots more still to discuss. But let's look now at some of your comments and questions. Well, Lucy Rawls agrees with Richard, so you'll be happy to hear that. But, and she says that she really misses seeing all the family on the balcony. Jill wrote about Prince Andrew's housing dilemma and she says, I feel sympathy for Andrew. Charles is not perfect either. Neither of them can compare or compete with their mother or sister. He wasn't convicted and maintains his innocence. Let him live out his life in the home he loves in peace. Capitalist General was pleased to see the new Edinburgh's out and about. They say, really love seeing Edward and Sophie getting the opportunity to shine, hope to see more of it. PS Testing has a question about them. I've always wondered if members of the royal family refer to their aunts and uncles as Aunt Sophie or Uncle Edward, even if they outrank them when greeting them. I, I would imagine they would. Yep, they, they, they do. In fact, I checked on this uh, okay. with someone I know, and they said they do. I mean, when it comes to the king and queen, it's slightly different. You know, they and obviously Queen Elizabeth are now with King Charles and Queen Camilla. There will be a curtsy in your majesty, but then it will be a kiss on the cheek and, you know, hello, Papa, how are you? And, you know, it will be, you know, Aunt Sophie and Uncle Edward. But they don't, even amongst the kind of the... the royals outside of the king and the queen there are situations where theoretically people should be curtsying or bowing to each other but as someone said to me if you did that every time you'd go into a room and someone would have a cup of tea somebody would have to stand up and bob a curtsy <laughs> it's just like it's not practical oh, imagine, so, they, so they don't imagine the glute strength though imagine the buns <laughs> of steel but anyway well, do you gonna... insist on your family doing yeah. that to you at breakfast <laughs> Richard oh, did I, you I stand wouldn't, up I wouldn't say no, wouldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> you could give it a go Richard I'm sure I know how that would go do keep those questions and comments coming we love them because we're very needy people like that and we have also had a huge amount of nice comments about what we were wearing so thank you for those and once again all the details for that is in the info below like and this week we have Rebecca English looking absolutely resplendent <laughs> Where in did her this ascot come from? regalia <laughs> Woo, just like magic. Now tell us about, what was this your ascot look? So yeah, it's Royal Ascot this week and uh, I was in the Royal Enclosure yesterday. Where hats um, are de rigueur. They are de rigueur. There's, there's strict mm. uh, rules and regulations and what you can wear. Although uh, you'll be delighted to hear that jumpsuits are now permitted. <laughs> it's probably a, because of Queen Camilla, not because of Joe <laughs> yeah. yeah. But as long as they are of the same colour all the way through and oh, the, really? you know, the straps have got to be a certain... But I, I like it, and, and that's what you see, the smiles on people's faces there, that, you know, it's one day in the year that they can actually just go and really dress up and enjoy themselves. Well, I'm feeling terribly underdressed now. So I should have um, I. put my top and tails on for the programme. I look like a little peanut head with short hair and a hat, so I've no hats for me. Well, Richard, all eyes on Ascot this year to see whether the king and the rest of the royals would give, in, give it the same attention as the late queen. Yes, because of course for Queen Elizabeth it was so important, it was really the highlight of her year that she would attend um, every day and you know it's known that um, King Charles is not so keen on horse racing as um, his mother was. Well he looked like he was having fun yesterday. Um, but yes, so far this week um, he's been each day and I think the plan is for him to and Camilla to carry on. And what fun we've seen. Um, they've had horses racing. Unfortunately, um, they didn't win. But what's um, such great fun for us is seeing their expressions because, you know, anyone who saw the coronation will remember Charles and Camilla looking very serious, you know, very somber, a bit nervous. And then when you're um, seeing images of them watching the, the racers, they're so animated and excited. 
Um, yeah. So was, it's been really good fun. There was one picture with uh, Zara Tyndall who just laughing, like a proper belly laugh at whatever Charles said. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah, we've seen some. We've seen a kind of fairly decent turnout of royals with them. We've seen the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, Zara, Zara Mike Tyndall, Princess Beatrice, and her husband's been there. Obviously not Eugenie because she's had a baby. Um, I'm just wondering, like, why is it, I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it because the palace didn't tell me, somebody else told me. Uh, but I think we're going to see William and Kate there on Friday. So mm, you heard it that'll be first. one to discuss for next week, That's I me. think. Yeah. Off with your head, Rebecca English. Let's uh, Moving to Montecito now. Remember them, remember the Sussexes. And, and shortly after we recorded our last episode of Palace Confidential, uh, the news broke that the Sussexes and Spotify were going their separate ways. Yeah, it all kicked off courtesy of um, Wall Street Journal, actually. So, uh, uh, you know, a learned publication, and they revealed that, uh, as you rightly say, uh, Spotify and uh, the Sussexes had ended this multi, multi million pound deal. Now, obviously, everyone was putting a very brave face on it, and uh, there was a joint statement from them saying that, that you know, it was an amicable parking of work, parking of ways. They were very pleased with the uh, the podcast that they produced. But let's not forget, it was only one series, Megan's Archetype series. It was 12 episodes in a, in a half hour Christmas special. Um, and immediately briefings started coming into things like Variety, which is the kind of industry Bible in America saying, don't be fooled, this is very much about productivity and and Spotify weren't happy with the level of productivity from the couple. And then to rub salt into the wound, Richard, um, there emerged some extremely unflattering comments from a very senior person at Spotify. These were extraordinary. I, I put them on Twitter from when the story appeared and I was a bit nervous because I thought, oh my goodness. So this was um, Bill Simmons, who's an executive and a very talented podcaster um, himself. He'd worked with them and he talked about having a Zoom call with Prince Harry to talk about ideas. Now, it's um, very interesting because none of those ideas actually appeared. Prince no. Harry never <laughs> appeared on podcasts, so whatever they are. But he says he won't say until he gets drunk one time and then he might um, reveal a few details. But what he said was he called them, um, I don't want to say in such polite society, but um, effing grifters. Now, grifters, we had to translate for our British readers because it's, it's an American expression which means sort of con artists, swindlers. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think most people know, but yeah. Yeah, there was yeah. a famous film called The Grifters. Mm. And, you know, that, that's a that's pretty unpleasant um, term. But I think what he meant was that, you know, they'd signed up for this deal, but they, they weren't very serious about it. And, and for me, that was illustrated by, in the Oprah Winfrey interview, when Prince Harry talked about how the only reason he'd signed deals with Spotify and with Netflix was because he was in a hurry to make money That's right, after yes. his father had withdrawn their multi-million pound security. So he thought, oh, how can I make a quick buck type of thing? But, you know, this has horrified Spotify and executives like Bill Simmons because, you know, as you know from this program, it takes an awful lot of work. It's serious work, it's planning, yeah. this sort of thing. You can't just turn up, oh, what should we do today? That's not what it's like. This is, um, you know, and that's been shown by, you know, I had to listen to these podcasts for this <laughs> for this program. So frankly, I'm not surprised that it's coming to an end. Oh dear, I want to make a personal plea to Bill Simmons. We would love to have you. We will get you all the drinks if you need to get drunk <laughs> to tell us what that Harry Zoom call was like. And as it's Great Britain, crisps will be served uh, but I think Rebecca it's pretty fair to say that their broadcasting plans haven't really worked out as predicted yeah I mean this is this I mean as I say everyone was putting a brave face on it but there is no doubt that this is a blow to them whatever spin they want to put on it and I know uh, team Harry and Meghan were briefing chosen publications saying oh she's looking with other platforms um, to uh, take the archetypes uh, a prototype across to them but it, it is it is undoubtedly a blow and I think what it gets the heart of is is what it is that they can sell mm. because of course I can 
and Matt, they, they've obviously probably gone in and said, we've got all this really worthy program making we want to do. And I can imagine the executives, oh, yes, of course we'll do that. But actually what they want to know is what it was like being a member of the royal family and, and trading on that. You know, I, I think anybody, even their biggest supporters, would admit people are not given multi, multi-million pound deals with no track record in the industry on the basis that they're going to produce some incredibly worthy programmes over a number of years. So, What do you think is next, Richard? The talk of commercial deals, I mean, they're going to be all right, aren't they? Um, well, as um, Rebecca says, they've made clear that um, Meghan wants to continue this archetype series, which um, you know, she thought would be the start of many things, and I'm sure they were hoping that Harry would do his own series of podcasts. Um, and this has been emphasised by a story of running my social diary today about Archwell, because that's their, their brand, and they continue to try and trademark the name. And the latest is that um, they've hit trouble, because there's another company, an American company based in Arizona, that had already trademarked the name for its own um, type of ventures. So, you know, they've got problems with that as well. So it's, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do next. I'm, I'm sure, look, they, they will make more pod, podcasts, but Spotify... Oh, good. <laughs> but Spotify, you know, it's a giant. It's the biggest company in its field. So whatever they do will be with a smaller setup. Why didn't they just call it Archie Well? After Archie? Um, well, they said it wasn't named after Archie. It was kind of... Got you. Um, it's Greek and it is. Yeah, yeah it, it, there's a rather just, complicated yeah. explanation. <laughs> yeah. Might solve all their yeah. problems, though. Archie will. Right, what, what do you think they will do? Where can they go from here, Rebecca? Well, there are some things in the pipeline. So there was uh, some rumours going around recently, which I asked one of my colleagues just to check out with Netflix, that Harry's big project, Heart of Invictus, which is following competitors for his Invictus games, had been canned. There were some rumours going around on social media. My colleague spoke to... Um, uh, Netflix and they said no it's very much coming out the summer but we still haven't actually had a, a date for that yet but after that there's there's vague talk of uh, there are other projects going on but no one's heard anything of them. Well, to be fair, that could be really interesting, couldn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, Prince Harry did a podcast series about Invictus. Personally, I'd love to hear the stories of um, servicemen and women who've been injured and what they've done after. You know, each one has a fascinating story to tell. So that's that's something. Oh, that uh, definitely. Do. And I mean, I've been out and covered several Invictus games when he was a working member of the royal family. And I think I've said before on this program, actually, I was with him in America many years ago when he was at the Warrior Games, and he turned to a few of us, uh, you know, when we were having a chat at the end of the trip, and said, "I really want to replicate this." in the UK and I think I said at the time I thought it was a lot of big talk would he actually do it and to be fair I, I was wrong and he was absolutely right he did do it and I've covered three or four games in different parts of the world and they are amazing you know and what it has the way it has transformed the lives of of the people who take part of it not just people with physical uh, disabilities I mean although there is one one gentleman I can remember in particular he's a quadruple amputee and we saw him doing rowing and archery and speed racing and you know you could see the transformation it's made in his life but also people with you know invisible um, disabilities as well so it is wonderful but this is not going to keep him going and this is not going to continue to make him big bucks in the future. Um, and if they want to support that lifestyle they've got out in the US, they're going to have to find a way to do it. And yet they're insisting we're not going to now. We've done our look back projects, as they say grandly. We're now looking to the, for to the future. But, you know, well, we'll we have to wait and see whether that actually works out. We will have to wait and see, and see we will. But it is montage time now. And to coincide with the week and Rebecca's glorious hat, here is a look back at some of the Windsor's most memorable moments at Royal Ascot.
Royal Ascot there through the ages. Now, a reminder that if you enjoy our content, remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our royal shows like this one. Thanks, as always, to Rebecca and Richard and to you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.